this is a Jaguar Series 3, it's a V12 E-Type, um, has a slight problem when we drive the car we don't have any oil pressure, um, the oil light stays on and the gauge is reading zero even when you're at road speed. I took both gauges or both sensors out and I put a mechanical gauge in to see uh, if the gauges were at fault or the senders, which they're not, I still get no oil pressure. So my only choice now is to have a look at the oil pump. Um, these cars are notorious for having uh, low oil pressure at, at idle anyway, um, but I'm going to take the oil pump off and uh, have a look at it. Um, it's a really involved job. I'm not going to go through the video step by step and explain how to do it. For one reason is it'll take me too long to do it, and the second is I can't see too many people actually needing to know how to do this job. I'm just doing it out of interest for people to see what's involved in doing it. The oil pump isn't in the sump, it's on the crankshaft at the front. So the first thing I've got to do is take the hood off, then I'll put the car in the uh, garage and put it on the hoist. Um, as you can see, um, I've took the hood off the car, um, removed all the front of it. The, what I have to do now is um, I have to take out the radiator and all the peripheral stuff on the top with the alternator and a couple of other things. I have to dismantle some of the, um, the top end of the, the car as well, or the engine, so that I can... Um, uh, get to the timing chain, but that'll be a little bit later. I'll st I'm concentrating on the front first. Anyway, so I've got the car ready, so we're good to start work on it now. As you can see, I've removed the radiator and I've took out the alternator, disconnected my power steering pump, and now I'm to the point where I've exposed all the front of my motor. I took off the air filters as well, because I have to do some work on top of the engine, which again is later on, we can see that. But, um, now everything's exposed, I'm going to clean it up all on the front and then we'll start taking the, um, the engine itself apart. Um, I'm going to look underneath and see the pickups and the oil pan underneath, which I have to take off anyway. And I'm going to check the pressure relief valve and the um, filtration system as well, make sure I've got nothing weird going on in there, but I'm not expecting to find anything in that part. Um, anyway, so that's what I've done. Um, as you can see, I've taken the oil pan off uh, the bottom of the engine. To do that, I had to take off the uh, oil filter housing, and um, that also contained the uh, oil pressure relief. So I took all that stuff off and then took off the oil pan. To get the oil pan off, I had to take off uh, two pieces that go across the subframe that are supports. There's uh, one further back between where the engine and the uh, transmission meet. Um, so I took that one off, took this off, and I had to take the entire exhaust off so that I could do that. Then I've dropped the oil pan. Um, I can see that my uh, oil pickup is okay. That's in the, uh, the oil pan in the center and it has a tube that comes up to the front of the motor. And this is where the oil pump picks it up from and then it puts it down on this side is the pressure side and it goes into the uh, um, piece that fits underneath the, uh, the oil pan where the intercooler between the oil and the coolant is. So we'll go over and have a look at that now. Um, this is the intercooler that fits underneath the oil pan. You can see where the oil pan is. The intercooler fits in here. And then the oil filter assembly, this is the oil filter casting, that fits inside the oil filter assembly. And on the edge of this, there's a pressure relief valve that's in here. I looked at the pressure relief valve, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not jammed open, the spring isn't broken. So there's not really any problem with it. Where the oil comes up, where it's picked up, where I just showed you, and it comes down the tube, what happens is it comes through the bottom of this, through here, into the um, uh, oil filter uh, casing or uh, part, and it comes through the oil filter, goes through the filter inside here, and then it comes out the tube, and goes up a large tube that's external on the front of the motor, and then connects onto the main gallery that's in the block. It goes right down the main gallery, and it feeds all of the uh, main bearings and the big ends uh, and all the other stuff in the engine on the top end um, but that's the main gallery and incidentally where the sensors were and the oil gauge that I plugged in went into that gallery almost directly the first connection that was on it it's just in a tube that goes up to the top of the motor um, there's also in the oil pan there's a windage tray that's what Americans call it call a baffle in England I guess Stick that in there and this stops the crankshaft picking up all the oil and splashing it and throwing it all over the place. So I've taken this out, this was okay. In the um, oil pan, I've been looking, 
hopefully I'm not going to find it, which I haven't. I was looking for little bits of bearings in the end of the in the oil, um, which I'm not finding, um, which is really good considering the motor's been running without any oil pressure. Not for long, but it's been running. So I haven't found anything in here that was got any silver bits in it or anything. So I think we're going to get lucky. But nevertheless, I'll take some of the caps off the engine to make sure the um, bearings haven't gone through to the brass. Anyway, my next stage now is um, I have to take off the pulley and do all the timing chains, so that's a different section again now that we're doing. On the front of the engine, I've removed all the uh, sprockets on the uh, camshafts and the sprocket on the uh, crankshaft on the bottom. There's an intermediate, intermediate shaft here that controls or drives the uh, distributor. Um, anyway, I took all that off and all the chain off. Uh, I removed the oil pump. Uh, that sits on the crankshaft um, and I've got all these pieces on the bench so I'll show you them. So these are the, these are the sprockets that we had on the uh, camshaft, goes on the top and this is one that we had on the crank. On both of them the teeth are really sharp, the, more, the, the, is, the sharpness is more pronounced on the uh, crankshaft one because these tend to wear more. Um, these are going to have to be replaced. On the oil pump um, this is the assembly that goes on the front of the crankshaft on the motor. On the oil pump itself, I'm going to take the cover off. You can see the gears inside the pump. And the way that it works is when the crankshaft turns it, it draws the oil in through here, passes it either side of the crescent, and as it comes down here, it compresses it. And on the back of the unit, you see here the, the face plate. This is the side that draws it up, and this is the one that gets compressed and it pushes out. It fits on there. The gears have got to be kept in mesh. You put them back so the teeth are always geared together. That's why I've marked them. To check the wear on it, I have to put a feeler gauge in here and in there to see what the gap is in between. And I've, I've done that already, and uh, the, the pump's got way too much play in the, in the centre gear, and there's too much play in the outside one too. In, 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 in short, the pump's knackered. I've got to put a new uh, oil pump on it. So that's another problem I've got with the engine. So now what's happening with the motor, I'm beginning to get a few things that are expensive to repair. I've got to do all the uh, sprockets, I've got to do the timing chain, all the tensioners, I've got to do an oil pump, I've got to need a gasket set for the bottom, um, the pieces are beginning to add up. So what I'm going to do is look at the bottom um, bearings, the, bearing, the main bearings and some of the uh, big end bearings and see if we've got any brass coming through. Because even though I didn't find uh, any silver or major wear inside the oil, I got a feeling that we're, we're going to have a problem. So that's what I'm going to check now. We're going to go back to the engine and do that. So what I've had to do on the motor, because I've got all the timing chains off um, and, the, and the camshafts are still tightened down, I can't turn the engine over or turn the crankshaft over to position my uh, bearings in the bottom on my uh, change of position of the crank with the camshaft still in position. So what I have to do is um, slacken up all my caps on the camshafts on both sides so I can uh, allow these to come up and it'll allow the valves to close which means when I turn my piston over and it's not timed, the cam isn't turning, I'm not going to have any interference between the valves and the pistons. So what I'm going to do now is lift up the uh, the car on the hoist and then we're going to have a look at the bearings on the bottom. So uh, then we'll know the worst I guess. So here's, here's one of the caps I've taken off. Um, as you can see, if I, if I just wipe this off a bit, you can see there's a bit of discoloration. It's starting to go through the brass somewhat and it's getting a bit iffy on the edges. But the bearing itself isn't really breaking up, which is why I didn't see any silver in it. But you can see the brass is starting to come. Now when I took off the main cap for number five, this was a lot worse. Um, as you can see, it's gone right through to the brass. Now the next stage that this is going to be in is starting to take pieces off it and it's going to be flaking and start the bearing's going to start disintegrating. So really we've caught this just in time. Um, I would suggest, I mean the amount of money it costs to do the bottom end, um, if I was just to re replace the bearings in the bottom wouldn't be a good thing. I could do it without taking the crankshaft out but I don't want to do that because I want to mic the crankshaft and see if it's oval or if there's any wear on it. 
because the amount of money for the bearings and the effort and the amount of effort I've put in it so far, not a good idea. I would rather size a crank and maybe have the crank regrind, so I regrind on the crank. I've checked the mains already, the fact that I'm through to the brass on the mains doesn't show good for the big ends because the mains, if they're lacking in pressure, it starves the big ends because it feeds the big ends through the main shaft, through the main bearings. So if the main bearings are losing pressure, the big ends are losing them as well. So even though it wasn't knocking, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find brass in the uh, big ends. So to me, I would have to regrind the crank and put all the bearings in it. So now the expense of this is getting... Uh, it's getting out there. I've got to take the engine out anyway, so that's what I'm going to do now. I've got everything ready now to lift the engine out. I've undone all the uh, top of the transmission inside the car, took the uh, centre console out and the gear shift out. Um, I undid all the uh, cross member and everything else under the transmission and the engine mounts and a couple of peripheral things I had to take off. I had the radiator out already because I took the front of the engine off, so it's actually not that bad. So I'm just going to lift it up and uh, lift it out. And uh, Bobby's your uncle, we put it on the floor. Okay, so you can see we've got the engine out of the car now. So uh, we just have to put it on the table and start transferring pieces and decide what we're doing. As you can see, I've um, got the engine on a bench now um, that we took out of the car. We've still got the transmission on that I'll deal with later. But um, uh, thinking about the engine now, um, we have to replace the oil pump. We're gonna have to take the crank out um, in order to uh, replace the bearings that are, that are marked. If we do that, we need to um, regrind the crank. If we're going to do that, we should check the rings. So now we're getting very slowly into a, uh, or very quickly, into an engine rebuild. Um, the heads on it are okay, because I did a leak down test on this, and the heads are fine, plus the fact we did these a couple of years ago when we had oil pressure. Um, so what I've done is I've managed to get another used engine, another V12 out of an XJ12, that had the carburetors on, it was an early model. The only thing I should have to do to it is uh, replace the oil pan uh, and the filtration system and some of the stuff on the front, and then it'll go into the E-type. Um, I put a deposit on the engine because it's a used engine. I couldn't hear the engine running. They told me it ran perfectly well, there was nothing wrong with it. Um, but, uh, you know, um, it's a used engine. So it's not in the car, obviously it got delivered like this, so I need to be able to check it. So what I'm going to do is I put the starter on the other side on this motor and I wide it up so we can crank it. Um, I put an oil pressure on, an oil pressure gauge, so I'm going to crank it and see what my oil pressure is and then I'm going to do a lead down test on this motor as well. Um, so that's where we are. I'm just going to finish wiring up the uh, starter and we'll be able to crank it over. Alright, as you can see, I've got my uh, start motor in place, my battery, I've hooked everything up and I've got my remote start button hooked into the uh, solenoid on top of the uh, starter so I can crank it. Uh, I've made sure there's oil in the engine, um, I've coupled up, as I said, I've got an oil gauge on it, so I'm just going to crank it, watch the gauge, see what our pressure is. <laughs> Okay, we seem to have uh, pretty good pressure, which is a good thing. So what I'm going to do now is uh, do the leak down with my uh, leak down tester. And then once I've done that, if all the cylinders uh, pass muster, we're at me. I've just got to change the bottom and throw it back in the car. There we go.
Um, I've completed the leak down test on the uh, on the engine, and unfortunately, I have one cylinder that's a dead one. It's uh, leaking through the valve. Um, I did that with a, a leak down test. Um, I don't use a compression test to do uh, to test an engine. I use a leak down test because it's a lot more accurate. Um, at the moment, I'm connecting up to the cylinder three B. Each bank, uh, this one's called B, this one's called A, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six going on each side. So uh, uh, at the moment, I'm in three B. So this one's on top dead compression. So I can show you now as I put pressure in the cylinder. You do it on here. And you can see on the gauge that the cylinder is holding fairly good pressure. Now I'm letting the pressure down off this. And what I'm going to do is disconnect this. Turn this over until I'm on four A. And I can tell which position I'm in of the cylinder of the uh, distributor. I'm putting this now into four. Now, as I put pressure in this cylinder, you can see the gauge again, where the gauge is up to. You can hear the air coming out of the exhaust on the other side on here and if I put a rag over the exhaust and you can feel the air coming out of it anyway as well as hear it so I'll just take the pressure off of here now the problem I've got is that the uh, cylinder head's obviously got a problem, um, which means I've got to take it off the engine, which on V12s isn't really, it's what I'm trying to avoid, but I'm not going to be able to. So I've got to take the engine off. So um, we put a deposit on the engine, we didn't pay for all of it, so I think we'll be having a discussion on how much the engine's worth now, because it's considerably less, because it's got a valve gun in it. So that shows you why, you know, I know it's fine they were. So, uh, as I say, I was expecting a good engine, I didn't get one. Um, good part is, at least I don't have to worry about the oil pressure. So now I'm left with the, uh, with the fact which way to fix this. Do I take the head off, uh, replace the valve, just in the one cylinder, which I'm a bit leery about, because the rest of the valves will just be as one on both cylinder heads, and I've got a pair of good heads on this engine. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll sleep on that first. Um, with the leak down test, um, I'm not going to try and explain or explain how to do it. What I'm going to do is just make a separate video of what a leak down test is and what it's about, but it's the way best way of, uh, of testing an engine. You can do it right on the bench, you don't need it in the car, and it's way better than a compression test. Anyway, um, so I'm probably going to be taking the cylinder head off, uh, off this engine anyway, which I have to do. So that's my next thing. As you can see, I've managed to take uh, the cylinder head off one side. And I'm just in the process of taking the other side off. Um, the way I have to do it, I have to pull it off using a plate and putting studs through and inching the head up because the head gets so tight. Uh, the reason for that is one, there's a lot of studs on it. It's quite a long length, so the head has to be straight when it's coming out. So you have to pull it up evenly. So trying to do it with pry bars is very difficult. You can't even move them with pry bars, to be honest. Um, and as you can see from the studs, the studs are really... Um, rusted, extremely corroded, um, and there's two sets of them, and one of them is the longest one that's on, it's three or four inches. You've got to pull off the whole thing. Anyway, I've got the head off, and the cylinder that I had a problem with was on the head, um, uh, the fourth cylinder down. So I have that on the bench over there, so we'll go and have a look at that.
This is the head that we took off. This is the front of the cylinder head, and this is the fourth cylinder. As you can see, the valve isn't actually burnt out, which was what we were expecting. But what the problem is, I took the valve springs and collets off this so I can move the valves with my hand. What the problem is, you can see the amount of movement that's supposed to be in the valve guide when I do it on the exhaust. It's incredible how much there is, to be quite honest. I've never seen one quite as bad as that. It's amazing. Anyway, so that's my problem. I've got to change the guide in it, uh, get the head resurfaced, and I'll look at all the rest of the other valves to make sure the seats are okay. So that's it. Um, uh, I've got the one head off, the other one's halfway off. I'm debating whether to take the heads off the uh, engine number one that came out of the car. Um, I'm going to see how good these are. Plus the fact I have a bit of an issue maybe with uh, wearing the cam carrier uh, on the uh, original heads, not on these. So that's another thing that I've got to check as well. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. What I decided, um, after looking at the cylinder heads, I looked at the uh, cost of putting new guides in it, new valves, then me setting all the uh, rocker clearance, all the tappet clearance uh, on both heads, I'd have to reset all that. By the time I got to that expense, it was uh, more prudent or cheaper to take the heads off uh, the engine that was in the car already because those heads were in good condition. I took them off and I checked them and they were indeed uh, in good condition. The fact that I had no oil pressure didn't affect the bearings on the camshaft. So I decided to go with those heads. So I've got those heads now ready to go back on the block. On the block, um, the used block that I got, I had to take off all the oil pan and all the front end of the motor uh, to change it over because the V12s have a different oil cooling system. Uh, and the oil pan and the uh, filter housing is different so I changed all that. I took the uh, timing cover off uh, to change the oil seal in the back of it. Um, so I stuck all that back together now on the, on the used block that we've got um, and now I'm ready to put the uh, cylinder heads back on. Um, as you can see I've got the uh, cylinder heads back on now. I've got my camshafts back on, I've timed them. I've got my distributor in, I've timed that. Um, I've got the throttle tower on. I've just got to put my uh, exhaust manifolds, which I've got on the other side, I've fitted. I'm just going to put them on here. Then I'm going to mount the, uh, lift the engine off the engine mount and um, put it on my table. And then I can put my transmission, which I've cleaned up and everything. Put my transmission and my clutch flywheel and everything on the back and assemble it up in one. Turn it around, plonk it in the car. Um, what I've done is cleaned up all the inside of the uh, engine bay as much as I can. Uh, mainly it just makes it better for me to uh, install it. So anyway, that's where I am now with uh, with the engine. So um, that'll be it really, I think. That's about everything. Now I have my engine together, got my exhaust manifolds on, put my uh, transmission on with my clutch and all my flywheel assembly, got it all bolted up so we're ready now to go in the car, all i got to do is lift it off the table. Alright. Turn it around and then put it into the front of the uh, engine door.
Okay, we've got it sat on the mount, basically. We're not lined up, of course. But we have it in there, so I'm going to stick a jack in the back. So that's what I'm going to have to do. I need to lift the back of the motor up a bit more. I don't know if I can do it with this. Oh, oh there we go. That helps. That's good. Uh, I just have to. I'm going to put a jack under the channel and lift it out. Anyway, basically, uh, we're more or less in position. As you can see, or as you know, um, I've got the engine back in. Um, I've put the car back on the hoist. Um, the way that I moved it, I jacked up the back of the transmission and put a rope around the transmission and up through the transmission tunnel. Uh, put a piece of wood across the top and held it up there, tiny knot on my rope, obviously, keeping the back of the transmission out. Got it back on the hoist. Once I lifted it up, I put my transmission mount on. Um, I put my exhaust front pipes on and the rest of the complete exhaust. I coupled up some of the cooling pipes up to the heater and I shimmed my uh, engine mount, a couple of shims either side. So what I've got left to do now, or what I'm doing now, <coughs> is all the stuff on the front of the motor, which will be... I'm putting the uh, steering pump mount on with the steering pump and on here we put the alternator, it's in reverse of course, sticks out the front. So it goes on a mount here on the front and then I put the radiator in and build up all my stuff uh, on the front end of the car and put the carburetors and everything else. So that's what I'm going to get on with. Now I have my radiator mounted with all my fans on it. I've put up all my hoses, my cooling hoses up to the thermostat housing. I've got the alternator on and I've put the power steering pump on as well. So we've got everything mounted uh, on the front end. So now what I'm left to do is put on the uh, carburetors and the manifolds which are uh, over here which I have to put on. And um, once we've got them on we're uh, good to go I think. Let's try and start the car. I have all the uh, carburetors mounted and the intake manifolds. I've got my throttle um, uh, control or my throttle uh, connected up. All my pollution pipes and uh, air stuff, my vacuum lines, I've got all my uh, ignition in. What I've done is I pressure tested the uh, cooling system, that's good. I um, uh, turned on my ignition and ran my uh, carburetors, filled them up with uh, gasoline, fixed a couple of leaks. Uh, one of the uh, carburetors was overflowing. Um, anyway, he repaired that. Um, so I'm good on the fuel system. I'm good on the cooling system. I put oil in the in the engine, and uh, I coupled up my uh, mechanical um, uh, gauge that you remember that I did on the loose engine. So I put that, coupled that up, cranked over the engine till I got oil pressure, which I got 40 pounds again. Um, because if you bear in mind, I, I changed all the oil system to pick up everything. So to make sure that was kosher, I did it again. So I got 40 pounds there. So uh, I was ready to start it up, which I have done. I've run the car. Everything, uh, the engine runs. Everything's uh, okay. It needs to be set up, finalised on the timing, the ignition timing, and then um, that's about it. Got to do my carburetors too. My carburetors are off a bit. Nothing major. But the car's alive now. It runs. So. Uh, I've got to put the uh, inner fenders on, you can see down there the missing, same on here. Mount my battery properly and do a couple of wiring things that uh, need to be repaired and then uh, stick the other on and uh, it'll actually go. Good. Okay, I have the car together. Um, I put steering rack rubbers on it. Um, I've got the engine running, I've done all the cooling, I've set up the carburetors, the ignition timing, done everything. Um, all I need to do now is a road test, which unfortunately I can't do because we've got a foot of snow outside and it's minus five. Um, there's no way I'm going to drive on a snowy road. So this weekend apparently um, the weather's supposed to change so the road will dry, maybe. If not, I'm going to have to stash it somewhere till the spring so I can drive the thing. Um, anyway, that's basically it. just got to put a hood on. And that's two bolts on the front and then one bolt for the stroke that holds the uh, uh, hood in position when it's up. Um, that's it, basically three bolts left, then I'm good and plug it in, plug the lights in. 
Anyway, um, that's it. I'm waiting for a weather break so I can actually uh, take it home to where it lives. Okay, that's it.